Every day, an archaeologist finds something that would surprise an average person. But to an archaeologist, it's no surprise at all. They see the trinkets and relics of the past a lot more often than we do, so it's much harder to shock them. They do still get shocked occasionally, though, and it always makes for a good story when they do. Every discovery you're about to see in this video came as a shock to the people who found them. A bare floor can often be made to look better by a carpet or a rug. That's as true today as it was 2,600 years ago, and it seems the style of rugs and carpets has barely changed in all that time. This is the Pazrik carpet, which was found in Siberia inside the tomb of a long-dead Scythian prince. You've almost certainly seen rugs that look like this in a store near you, which is a reminder of just how long the tradition of rug making has been around for. Normally, material like this would perish and rot after such a long time, but archaeologists got lucky with the Pazrik carpet. When Russian archaeologist Sergei Rudenko came across the tomb that contained the artifact in 1949, he noted that it had been broken into many centuries ago. The bitter cold of Siberia had permeated throughout the tomb and frozen its contents, so the rug got a little helping hand from nature to ensure it survived to the present day. What's even more incredible is that the people who made this rug were nomads. We don't even credit them with being able to make basic settlements, and yet they created this. Scientific and archaeological surveys began at the world-famous Italian site of Pompeii during the 1700s, and they're still ongoing today. The entire city was buried under ash and turned into a time capsule by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79, and each square foot of its territory has to be carefully dug out and sifted through. There's still a great deal to explore and amazing discoveries to be made, like this 2,000-year-old ancient Roman chariot. The chariot's wooden shaft and platforms have long since rotted away, but experts have been able to recreate its original shape by injecting plaster into the voids they left behind beneath the ash. The end result is so detailed that you can even see the imprints of the floral decoration pattern on the vehicle's surface. The elaborate nature of the decorations leads historians to believe that rather than being an everyday chariot used for commuting or work, this was a polentum, a special chariot used for ceremonial activities, including parades, weddings, and community festivities. We guess you could call it the limousine of its day. The kangaroo is the first animal that comes to mind when we are asked to think about Australia. The connection between the country and the marsupial is a strong one, and apparently that's been the case for thousands of years. In February 2021, new studies were carried out on rock and cave art in the Kimberley region, yielding two exciting results. The first is the confirmation that these paintings are the oldest in Australia. They were made approximately 17,300 years ago. The second is that the oldest of all the paintings in the country is this detailed picture of a kangaroo. The animal is painted into the ceiling of one of Kimberley's many rock shelters, using mulberry paint as a medium. Dating the rock art itself would have been almost impossible, but fortunately, there are fossilized wasp nests both on top of and beneath the paint. The wasp nests can be carbon dated, and so dating the pictures became possible. It's been noted that the style of art is similar to that seen in caves on the island of Sulawesi and in Indonesia, so this breakthrough might even indicate where the first human occupants of Australia came from. You'll find the strange stone ornaments known as the Dicus spheres all over Costa Rica. They're not rare. In fact, they're so common that some people even use them as lawn decorations. As ubiquitous as they are, though, nobody's really sure where they came from. They're thought to be native to the land, and so were probably carved by Costa Rica's indigenous people. But there may be no connection between those indigenous Costa Ricans and the people who live there now. 
Instead, they might have been carved and shaped by a civilization that's been lost to time. Workers from the United Fruit Company were the first to bring the spheres to the world's attention during the 1930s, as they began to dig them up during the course of their labor. It's likely that they were made by taking boulders that already had a rounded shape and enhancing the shape by fracturing, grinding, and pecking them. It's hard to know when this was done, but archaeologists think it was somewhere between the 8th and 16th centuries, which is quite a large window. Nobody can offer even a vague theory as to why they were made, but they were obviously significant to somebody. If you're one of our Canadian viewers, you're probably already familiar with the Hepburn Stone. The artifact was discovered on Vancouver Island during the 1920s by a man named J.T. Hepburn, who was digging out a well near the Naniamo River. When Hepburn came across the stone that went on to take his name, it was tangled up in the roots of a very old tree. As the tree was around 1,000 years old, it was long assumed that the stone had gone into the ground at around the same time. We now know that isn't the case. The Hepburn Stone, noted for the terrifying face carved into its surface, is more likely to be around 15,000 years old. That new finding is based on the fact that it was 28 feet below the surface. The ground hadn't been disturbed prior to Hepburn digging out his well, so there's no way it could have reached that depth in just 1,000 years. The relatively new theory means that the long-standing assumption that it was created by the native Schnunemuk's nation must be wrong, because they weren't around at that time. We now have no idea who made it. When our ancient ancestors began to shape and mold the world around them, they did so using stone tools. Our earliest human ancestors weren't the first human-like species to do this, though. We know that because in December 2020, a 350,000-year-old grinding tool was found in Taban Cave in Israel, on the side of the delightfully named Mount Carmel. The first Homo sapiens on Earth aren't thought to have emerged until around 50,000 years after this tool was made, and didn't start making stone tools for another 100,000 years after that. It's surprising that the tool had evaded discovery for as long as it did, because Taban Cave has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site for years, and so has been extensively studied and explored. While we know that ancient hominids smashed objects using pieces of stone more than a million years ago, this tool is a little more sophisticated than a blunt instrument. The abrasions on its surface indicate it was rubbed horizontally to grind objects, rather than break them apart. Possible candidates for its users include early Homo erectus or Homo heidelbergensis, but we'll probably never know for sure. Beer has been helping human beings socialize and make bad decisions since time immemorial, but it's only recently that archaeologists believe they've been able to trace the practice of brewing beer back to its point of origin. It might surprise you to hear that the point of origin might be Abydos in Egypt. That's where the discovery of what's thought to be the world's oldest beer factory was announced in February 2021. Archaeological evidence obtained from the site indicates that it was in use 5,000 years ago. That means it belongs to a time where the mighty King Narmer sat on the throne of Egypt and became the first person to unify the country. Perhaps it was the beer that finally brought them all together. There are eight separate brewing units at the site, each of which features 40 individual pottery basins. Grains and water would be heated up inside the basins to produce a fairly bland and primitive form of beer. It would have been flat and warm, but based on the recent trend for flat, warm craft beers, it might prove to be a hit if someone brought the recipe back today. A few moments ago, we were talking about our ancient ancestors using stone tools. While stone was always the default choice 5,000 years ago, it wasn't the only material that was used for making tools and weapons. Someone in Spain made a beautiful dagger out of rock crystal and then placed it in the tomb of Montalirio Tosos, 
where archaeologists found it in 2010. The tomb is a very long way from the nearest crystal mine, so having it made and shipped to its current location would have been an enormously expensive exercise. Experts say it's the most sophisticated prehistoric dagger ever found on the Iberian Peninsula and would have required incredible craftsmanship to produce. At the time, rock crystal was associated with vitality and magical powers. This artifact may therefore have had a symbolic or ceremonial use rather than a practical one. It's also probably a statement about how the person buried in the tomb was viewed by the people around them. Elsewhere in the same tomb were painted ostrich eggs, jewelry, and elephant tusks, but nothing that even comes close to matching the majesty of this beautiful blade. Earlier on, we mentioned that Homo sapiens wasn't the first of the great apes to start using tools or beginning many of the behaviors and traditions that we'd recognize as human today. A very long time ago, there were also the Neanderthals. Historians and archaeologists aren't totally sure what happened to the Neanderthals, but they generally suspect that they were driven to extinction by humans. Those that share that belief may soon have to reevaluate it. Inside the cave known as La Cote de saint brelade on the British island of Jersey in 1910, archaeologists found 13 teeth. For more than a century, they were believed to be the teeth of one single adult Neanderthal, but they were re-examined toward the end of 2020. The recent study, which used all the benefits of modern technology, concluded that the teeth belonged to two different individuals, both of whom belonged to a hybrid species of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. At barely over 48,000 years old, they're also far more recent than any other Neanderthal discovery in history. With this remarkable find, we might now be forced to consider the possibility that Neanderthals integrated with Homo sapiens through breeding rather than being driven to extinction. The climate in Norway is gradually getting a little warmer. Because of that, mountain passes that have been buried under deep layers of snow for thousands of years are gradually thawing and melting, and the artifacts that were once trapped beneath that snow are coming to light. The more artifacts that archaeologists are able to recover from the mountains, the more we find out about the people who use them as trade routes. While solid hardy objects like distaffs and weapons are among the items that archaeologists probably expected to find, some of the more unique discoveries thus far have included tunics, mittens, snowshoes for horses, leather footwear, and arrows that still have their feathers attached. Such materials would have rotted away a very long time ago under normal conditions, but the snow has proved to be the perfect preservative for them. As well as all the personal possessions, experts have also identified stone cairns that were probably used as landmarks by people embarking on long journeys. So far, it appears that the mountain pass at Lendbreen was first used during the 3rd century and remained in use until the 15th, with a peak during the Viking Age of the 11th century. In 2011, archaeologist Clifford Couthard went deep into Andiamathanha County in Flinders Ranges, Australia, in the hope of finding out something new about the region's ancient aboriginals. After a frustrating few hours of finding nothing whatsoever, Clifford scurried off into woodland because he needed the toilet. That's when he found a rock covered in strange markings, and then another, and another after that. Following the trail along, he eventually found himself standing in a 50,000-year-old aboriginal rock shelter. If he'd had better control of his bladder, he'd probably never have found it. The shelter shows signs of having been in use for around 40,000 years, and even though it's been empty for 10,000 years since then, the walls of the shelter are still black from the smoky fires that were once lit inside it. Further investigation revealed the presence of awls and axes made more than 30,000 years ago, making them the oldest in the country. 
They might have been used to cut up the bones of the Diprotodon opatum that were found inside the shelter. The wombat-like creature was as big as a rhino. It no longer exists today, but it would have been an excellent source of food back then. At the risk of stating the obvious, wooden structures don't last as long as stone structures do. Wood rots away, whereas stone doesn't. Because of that, many of the wooden buildings created by our ancestors are lost to time. But there are a few exceptions. Take this wooden well in Ostrov Chechia, for example. Based on the results of dendrochronological dating, archaeologists say it was made in the year 5256 BCE. That makes it more than 7,000 years old and, therefore, the oldest wooden structure in the world. It's only survived for this long because it was entirely submerged underwater for several thousand years. Now it's exposed to the air, it's going to require urgent preservation work to ensure that it doesn't dry out completely, which would destroy it. What's especially interesting about the well is its grooved corner posts, into which planks are inserted. This demonstrates a level of woodwork skill that was once thought to be beyond the capabilities of Neolithic people. Given that they would have been working with hand tools made from stone or bone, the level of precision is astonishing. Yet again, it appears we've underestimated our ancestors. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!